What's up, guys? This is Cody, a.k.a. DFS Prodigy, coming to you live to talk about this upcoming showdown slate featuring the Brooklyn and Washington team. Then we're going to dig into the night slate hammer. Today's basically just breaking the night showdown with my co-host, Kirk. How's it going, man? Doing good. I got a little snow today, so had a day off from work, ready to dig in some NBA. Right. So breaking down this first showdown slate with Brooklyn and Washington, tell me who you like at the very top. So uh, this is going to be an offensive – it's it, crazy. Uh, so I like all the studs. I like Bill. I like Durant. I like Irving. I like Westbrook. Um, now that we have the hard news, luckily we got it out early. Um, I think that you pretty much just have to attack Brooklyn and their top scores, and you have to have Durant and Irving. Um, I'm liking Irving for some reason. Every time he plays Westbrook, he does great. And that's one of the ones I'm going to be targeting. Although Westbrook, I mean, he's going up against former teammates and you know how his competitive edge is. He could come out and this could be his game. So those are the two I'm targeting at captain currently. Right. So that's where I'm looking at also is I'm loving Westbrook and Irving at cap. I think Westbrook is going to have – a great game personally if he didn't get ejected last game he was on pace to score 60 so he he's typically on fire when Beal and both him on court I'd rather get to Westbrook but this team has their hands full with this Wizards with really shots not falling he's rusty like he came out in the press conference and said Burton's the shots not falling it's going to be basically Beal and Westbrook having to carry this Wizards team against the Nets with Durant and Kyrie Irving I think Kevin Durant's cheap and so I think this price is soft with these studs, I think you can easily fit on four, which we'll talk about in a little bit, which we'll show you all how to do. And basically, like, I'm on the same track as you with Irving or Westbrook at cap. To be contrarian, I wouldn't mind getting to some Kevin Durant. But mainly, that's my main focus is getting you Westbrook or Irving at cap and then filling in the rest with Durant, Beal, and then deeper guys. Let's talk about this yeah, mid-range. The price is on Irving Durant. and Durant. Yeah, they're, they're not uh, changed – to equivalent for the um, hard news. So right. just having them locked into every lineup and one of them as a the captain looks great. And like you said, Westbrook, triple-double. If he's the only one who goes for a triple-double, you need him. Exactly. So what do you think about this mid-range with the Joe Harris, DeAndre Jordan, Rui type of crew? Um, None of them. I don't think we'll really get the, the volume needed to pay off that price tag when I'm going to have all the studs in there. I'm looking for people that are going to have 25 plus shots. I um, mean, that's crazy to say, but this game could be 130 to 140 points. So you need the guys who are going to score 30 plus points. And I just don't want to take that risk with Joe Harris or Jordan having a 15 rebound game. Um, maybe they go small, uh, really shots not falling. Green sometimes just disappears on the court. Ish is not the old ish that we used to see come off the bench and explode or fill in for people when they're hurt. Right. So I'm really keeping it simple, plugging in all the studs and then just trying to find the small guys to fit the puzzle. Exactly. So Joe Harris is typically scoring dependent. Like when we look at his stats, it's literally 10 points and then one assist, maybe one rebound. He cannot do any of the peripheral stats. It's just not looking good at all for him. I'm not paying that price tag. 6600 is way too high for me. Johnny Jordan would be a mid-range option. I wouldn't mind getting to if you want to be contrarian. I don't mind trying to fill him in. Rui, like I said, like with his press conference, he said he's rusty. The shots is not falling for him. I don't trust it. Jeff Green is another mid-range option. I wouldn't mind getting to. He's seeing good minutes. And that's really about it. Bird Tans, I'm not getting to. This he was looked awful. Ish Smith is not seeing minutes. I'm off. If if we're going below 5K, the main guy would be Jerome Robertson for me. I'm Jerome Robertson seeing the minutes he's getting. What do you think about the lower range? Robinson's good. Um, he, can, he can do a little bit of everything. I also like Brown at his price tag. Um, I'm looking at those are pretty much the only two. I don't think Robin uh, Robin Lopez is going to be that effective this game, although there's spurts where when he starts, all of a sudden he scores a ton of points in the first quarter, and you look like, wow, he scored 15 in the first quarter, and then he finishes off with 17.5. So um, I, I really wouldn't worry too much about him. And then I think you showed me a guy – how cheap was he? Uh, the other guy. Literally, literally bare minimum. Yeah, and – in a What's slate on? where we're both on the same page on jam in the studs, get one in the captain spot. Uh, 
lock in those secured points. These are the type of guys and plays that we need. If he gets anything over 12 minutes today, he'll crush his price tag. Exactly. So that's what I wanted to talk about is the Troy Browns on the slate. Gill didn't see minutes last slate. He only saw two minutes. Troy Brown, literally, the coach already said he's going to see run and basically join this lineup or the backups. He's $1,000. You can't go wrong with $1,000. He's going to see minutes. He's going to get you there. I, I, I'm all over it. I'm not paying any of this mid-range, the thousands. I'm not paying any of that. Bruce Brown is the guy I want to talk about filling in the role. For James Harden, he saw garbage time minutes last slate and literally got you 15 points in the last, like, five minutes or so of the game. So he can hit value whenever he turns it on. So I like Bruce Brown at 3,800. TLC is just a mid-range option that I'm not really getting to. Where I, I can go to Bruce Brown. But the Neto news is what opens me up for Jerome Robertson, which I want to kind of get him in the lineup. I don't mind getting him, though. But really, other than that, the lowest time they're going to go is pay for Bruce Brown or go all the way down for 1,000 for Troy Brown. Closing thoughts on this. So I was like, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Me too. So let's go over to the next slate, which would be the Wolves. So start talking to me about the Wolves on this slate. Okay, so right now we have injury news. Towns is still going to be out. Herman Gomez is going to be out. Reed, who was out last game, still has his injured wrist. Uh, Russell may sit as well. This team's going to be hurting for people to score. They're not going to be a big team. Cleveland can come in and between Drummond, Allen, Nance, just completely destroy this team on the glass. Uh, you could see all of the big men get in foul trouble very fast. And I just, I personally really like Cleveland in this game. And I think because all of the top end guys kind of have the Q tags or out tags, you can kind of make a stars and scrub lineup again, pretty much picking every person that you want, including the highest price drumming captain and then picking one mid range person. You don't have to look for the Troy Browns on this slate. Exactly. So with all the injuries, Andre Drummond is definitely a lock of the slate in all formats at captain word player pool. I'm locking him at captain. You can easily fit him in and competitive games. He's going to see over 28 minutes, which is typically his like focal point is around 28 minutes. If the game's not competitive, he'll get 25. Either way, though, it's not making me push off of him. I'm on him on all formats, like I was saying. Either way, he can easily destroy this defense. So uh, this defense doesn't scare me for Andre Drummond. I think he easily smashes. Russell is the guy I'm not really getting to. I know the price tag is under 9K, but in formats he does play, he's not seeing the minutes. He's not getting you that scoring minutes that you need. So I'm not on Russell. And either way, I'm not really getting to him. Colin Sexton is a guy I do like at 8,000. I think you can run him and Jared Scullin together. I wouldn't be afraid of that. I like Colin Sexton. He's definitely an improved player this season. The minutes he's getting, he's getting you the points. I like him a ton. What do you think about Beasley and Larry Nance? Uh, I like Beasley, whether like Russell Beasley, plays or not. Russell plays but if not. Russell's out, you have to have Beasley in. Um, I could see the argument if they're both on the court um, that you pick one or, or the other. But uh, then other than that, the only real score they have is Edwards. Yeah. Literally, that's all. And I'm completely off Larry Nance. I just, I don't see. I mean, he's just so iffy, um, especially since I'm wanting Drummond to pretty much be the old Drummond and be that guy who gets the rebound, put back, miss, rebound, put back, miss, rebound, put back, miss, and all of a sudden has a nine point playoff of three misses. Um, so that could easily happen this game against a very undersized, undersized, not deep, hurt Minnesota team. Literally. Like, I, I just could never get to Nance, to be honest with you. He's just a guy that if he does hit it for you, then you're really lucky. If he doesn't, it's not surprising to me. And people Garland, like playing him. People people like him as a player. Yeah. And I, I just want to stay off that ownership of just – I'm playing the guy because I like him. Yeah, I'm off of that situation. Darius Garland, like I said, he's getting consistent minutes. He's looked good when he's back. I, I wouldn't mind getting to Darius Garland at all in the mid-range. Uh, Jared Allen is not a guy I'm really getting to with Drummond. If Drummond was supposedly all of a sudden out, then yeah, we'll get to Jared Allen possibly. But other than that, I'm not playing Jared Allen. I haven't really played him when he's been on the Cavs. So he's not a guy I'm really looking at. This combo of Anthony Edwards and Jared, Jared Vanderbilt, talk to me about them two guys. So Edwards, Edwards, with or without Russell, has been getting enormous shot volume. 
Um, you can't really deny that. The ball, he's now getting better. Uh, he started off the year ice cold, like shooting 15%. I mean, it was awful. Yeah. And now, um, now that he's actually kind of evened out to just a normal player with that shot volume, the price at 6K is well worth it. And then if you see that he's one of the only ball handlers the team has, um, they're going to showcase their number one pick. So he looks like a great, great pick in a great spot if um, Russell was out. If Russell's in, it's coin flip. Um, and then Vanderbilt, this team does not have any big men. I don't want to pick any big men because they're going to have to go up against Drummond and Allen and Nance, and it's not a good spot. But if you tell me that Vanderbilt gets 35 minutes, granted he's been playing about 22 to 25, but if, if he's the only man they have – He's, he's going to get the rebounds. He's going to get a couple shots. Um, so the wait for that Reed, uh, Reed news and Russell news, and that should let you know right then if you're going to play Vanderbilt or not. If they're in, don't play them. If they are, then, uh, then I have their out. Then, yeah, give them a shot. Exactly. So that, that Reed news is going to be volatile. But either way, I'm on Edwards, to be honest with you. I really, I'm lucky Edwards because he's still going to see the shots. He's still going to throw up the shots, basically trying to work on his form. Because what else does Minnesota have to play for? Is literally, it's going to be a show. Now, would you play, play Reed if he plays? I would. I'm not playing Reed either way, because I think yeah, the, foul trouble, the foul trouble. The foul trouble. We've seen him getting foul trouble with big guys like a Jokic, like a Drummond, like uh, Embiid. He cannot handle the big man. Like mm-hmm. when he's on the court, he's going to get in foul trouble. It's literally four quick fouls is what normally happens with Reed. I mean the volume. The volume's there. So I wouldn't mind it, but it would be a 70-30 for me. 70% of the time I'm not playing him. Yeah. I mean, you can do a lot with the salary, but <clears throat> I'd, rather, I'd rather get to Beasley with no Russell possibly than go to Reed. So A team that could get down and need to start shooting threes. You want the guy who has the ball in his hand instead of the guy that could try to get a rebound against these towers that Cleveland has. So. Exactly. So that's why I'm not really going – on Reed. Either way, I like I said, I'm on Edwards. Vanderbilt would be the key piece if Reed is out, then I'll get to Vanderbilt. If Reed is in, I'm off of Vanderbilt at that price point. I think the price one's a little high if Reed is in. What are your thoughts on Osmond and Rubio? Um, Osmond, I haven't played too much of him. I just don't think it'll be that great of a matchup this time. I think it's going to be more of we're just so huge of a team that we're just going to play slow and safe and um, pretty much just make it a grungy game that's not going to be fun to watch and Cleveland should win by at least 10. So I think Osman's not going to be that type of, like, running gun type guy this time, and they're really not going to need him that much. So that's and Rubio, yeah. Rubio just hasn't been good. No, he, he really hasn't. He's not seeing the minutes, which I don't understand, is when he's on the court, he's just not getting the volume. So that's why I don't understand it all with him. But – um, what do you think of Prince or Okoro? Because of the way the slate they priced all these hurt people, um, you can just jam in everyone that's good. So yeah. even even if you put the highest priced person Drummond as your captain, you can fit in every player after that. Um, so there's I'm not going to take any risk on any of those guys. I'm just going to kind of wait for that news, find out if Russell's going to be in or not. If Russell's in, I might play him. If not, then. Um, just kind of play most of the top guys. You really won't see me roster that many low volume players today from this game. Yeah, exactly. The lowest I'm going to go is probably Ed Davis if Reed is also out. Yeah. Or or McLaughlin. I like them two guys. Basically, the combo. I think McLaughlin. I think both can go very under under too because exactly. a lot of people will see how much salary they have left and want to use it all and sit and go with the Nance or Oshman or someone like that and they could score twenty. Um, and be a lot safer. But then if McLaughlin goes off for 26 because he starts, you're in just such a better, unique spot. Exactly. So that's why I, I'm liking the McLaughlin because of Rubio's minutes are not there. McLaughlin's getting the run. And with Culver out, that opens up more run for McLaughlin. So either way, I like him. And Ed Davis is going to be a great play. He's going to have to be the big man to block if Nasri is out. So that's only the case for that is if Reed is out, then I'll go to Davis. If Reed's in, then X off Davis completely. To be honest with you. Um, do you have any last closing thoughts before we head out of here, man? 
No, this these are two awful teams in All right, so that pretty much wraps up for us, guys. Do you have any last closing thoughts before we head out here, man? No, it looks like a great slate. Two awful teams um, defensive-wise in the Wizards and in the Minnesota Timberwolves that just can't win and can't play defense. So play the guys against them, uh, profit off of that, and make the money. Exactly. So that pretty much wraps up for me, guys. Hit the like button for me. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow Kirk at DFS Bros. You can find him on Twitter. Basically, just chat him up. He's always on there making his gambling tips. And that wraps up for us, guys. So, again, have a great and safe rest of your day. Have a good one, everybody. Have a good one.